Robertson and, and Sherman Parks. Uh, they were all uh, black attorneys here in Topeka. And at that time, they were Eisenhower Republicans. And my dad ended up being a Republican state senator, and they helped him in his campaign. And the first campaign I actually worked on was Sherman Parks when he ran for um, judge. So I uh, found it interesting then, in, um, a few years later, in 1992, uh, Sherman Parks Jr. was elected president of the board. And so there had been other uh, black presidents, but he was the first who had gone to school, you know, post-Brown like us. Mm -hmm. And he, so he had a, a statement that he was the first president of the Board of Education who benefited from B Brown. And um, so that was in the paper, and I just gave him a phone call and uh, corrected him and said... Um, I benefited from Brown mm -hmm. uh, as a white student, and and I really believe that 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 Brown was not just for the black students; it was for for the whole country. That we, in order to be a you know truly a united country, mm -hmm. uh, we have to break down every barrier we can. Right. I actually went to Monroe Elementary School. Oh, okay. And I went there in first grade and ended up transferring. Well. My first grade teacher realized that I must have been gifted, had me tested. In order for me to, to take advantage of the gifted curriculum, I had to go to a predominantly white school to do that. And at the time, it was Quentin Heights Elementary School. Uh -huh. And so I remember being taken out of my element with all my friends, family members that were attending Monroe, Monroe to go to this other school so that I can get this academic supplemental instruction that I needed to be able to reach my full potential. So I ended up going for uh, first grade, half year first grade, half year second grade at Quentin Heights Elementary. And they brought me back to Monroe Elementary as a fourth grader the next year. And so I had skipped two grades, had not learned the things that you would have learned in um, third grade. I had to kind of teach myself how to cursive write, you know. Oh. But along with that, I experienced some dissonance in that the people that thought I had left them to go to this other school, now thought I thought I was too good for them. So when I came back, oh, that's tough. there was a lot of contention. Oh, yeah. and, and I found myself um, trying to figure out how to reconnect to my own community. You know, I knew the people, but in the educational setting, there was not a connect. But um, so I just focused on the academics all the way through high school. I didn't try to do a lot of social activities. You know, I was all about the grades and I did very well in school, ended up graduating at 16. Um, when I went to college, though, um, I didn't feel like I didn't have that um, that roadblock anymore. All of a sudden, I can be the person I was intended to be, and that's when my social piece came to bear. But I, I, I can't help but go back and think about why was I not able to be accomplished in my own setting, you know, and what, how would things be different for me, specifically as I went through school, had I been able to stay in my own setting um, and grow from there. But here I am today, uh -huh. and I think even that experience informs what I do on the board today. Now, now, technology, of course, is so far advanced now over when I was on the school board, and you might not even be aware of the fact that uh, we had these huge maps of the school district, and we had one with the boundaries for uh, the high schools, and then for the middle schools, and then for the elementary schools, and there was a colored pinhead based on race. And so every black student in the school district, depending upon which one of those three levels they were at, so there was a black pin right at their address, and there was a white pin for every white student, and then they had other colors in there. And you could just walk into that room and, and see where the concentration of housing was. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a real visual impact. And I found myself then later thinking, since I was president when the Brown Three was filed, you know, I'm on the wrong side of Brown, uh, and I uh, then I got elected to the uh, city council in 1993 and served for 12 years. And so in uh, 1994, my, during my first year on the council, I proposed a, an integration plan, um, which included the city admitting its role in segregation because of the concentration of uh, low-income housing, uh, particularly the, the public housing, and that uh, languished in committee. <laughs> um, but we did address some things. Mm -hmm. um, and then 10 years later, I was still on the council and 
it was an entirely, everybody else was different. And we actually got that passed. So the city is on record as admitting that it had a role. Um, I don't think the federal government um, stepped up and, and really said that, you know, we're to blame too. Yeah, it's so many facets that really feeds into systemic racism because over time it's just built into policies that continue to create certain outcomes. And um, so you're right, we all have a responsibility to either interrupt that or if we're not interrupting that, then we're um, cooperating with it to make the outcomes that we have. Brown's re actually lasted 10 years before they finally came with the ruling, uh, but it was kind of a mixed ruling, um, and it was a two-to-one vote uh, from the uh, Court of Appeals in uh, Denver. And so uh, Judge Rogers here in Topeka had originally ruled in favor of, of the school district uh, and against the plaintiffs. And then he was reversed, um, uh, like I said, by that two-to-one vote. But um, they didn't, the, co the federal court didn't implement anything there. They sent it back to Judge Ro Rogers to do the implementation. Uh, but then by that point, there was, um, you know, a lot of that, the changes had been made mm -hmm. anyway. And um, so we, we learned from the, the case while it was going on. Thank you.